Everyone who's starting hates flash photography, and that's because it's very difficult to get it right. And today we'll be discussing how to balance ambient light and flashlight right now. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to New Peaks, where we learn how to be better photographers by sharing experiences and mistakes. And today, I want to dive in, in a quite controversial topic, which is flash photography and how to properly use it. Actually, this will not be like a very technical review or review of the flashes that I use, but I just want to make it clear what's the secret to get well-balanced image, or at least what I think that changed the way how I use flash. And all of that, it's inside one concept, which is when you use flash for your picture, now whether it's off camera or it's on camera, it's like adding a second exposure to your camera because you have to distinguish the light that you have into the environment and that's the ambient light and that's your exposure number one for example and then what the flash lights up and that's exposure number two so there's always a fine balance that you have to strike between the ambient light and the flashlight and that depends upon what you want to do for example let's imagine that you are in a room which is pretty dark and dim and then you add the flash just to light a subject like for example what happens into the studio with strobes you want for example have a dark background well in that case your first exposure like the ambient light is gonna be black and that's why you set your camera to have a very dark ambient and then you set the power of your flash just to light your subject and that's gonna be a second exposure and everything comes down to how your flash is synced with the shutter speed now for example if you imagine the shutter speed like a timeline what happens for example you can set a shutter speed of one second and the shutter will open and here will close what will happen is that when you press the shutter the shutter opens then the flash fires giving your first peak of light and then basically it goes on for one second until the shutter close so as you can see you will have captured two kind of lights first is the light of the flash and then it's the light that the camera keeps capturing after the flash is fired and until the shutter closes so what happens is that if you have a very powerful flash but the shutter is not open for enough time in order to add ambient light in what you will have in the picture is a very unbalanced scenario which we might want so you might have a very bright subject because the flash has lit up but the shutter has not been open enough to capture ambient light. And that's something desirable, for example, if you are in studio or that look that you're looking for. But let's assume that you are in a very dim situation, but you still want to have some ambient lighting so that the flash doesn't look too obvious. And you can set a longer shutter speed. And what that will do is that after the flash has fired, the shutter speed doesn't close. It stays open long enough to capture more light from the ambient. And what that will do, it will brighten the environment, making your subject pretty clear because the flash lighted it, but still everything else around the subject might come up nicely lit. In addition, what the flash does is freezing motion. So even if you have a low shutter speed, like I don't know, one second or one fiftieth of a second, if your subject is still, you can pretty much handheld your camera and have very sharp images. Now let's see a little bit how it works with few examples. And here we are in bridge. Now I want to share with you a few examples that I took. Basically I had as subject this lamp with a um, puppet or goat on the top and we are in my room basically I set the exposure to kill almost all the ambient light and as you can see we are at 125th of a second f1.8 and ISO 100 now this shutter speed and this aperture it's what you will typically have if you shoot any indoor event 1.8 of aperture is because you want to gather as much light as possible. 125th of a second is because if the people is moving and dancing, you cannot keep your shutter speed too low without shooting with strobes. And then you want to keep your eyes so as low as possible to avoid noise. Now, if we wouldn't have any flash and you want to keep this shutter speed and this aperture, you simply have to increase your ISO. And we can go from ISO 100 and to have proper exposure, the lighting metering says we have to go up to ISO 6400. And as you can see, my subject and the background, they're both very well lit. 
Now what happens if I mount a flash on top of my camera and I shoot it directly on the subject and I put it in TTL which means that the camera is going to calculate how much light the flash has to provide in order to light up the scene. So with my flash on my camera, without changing any one of these settings, I just shoot and here you can see that now the flash is adding light to the scene and in fact everything is overexposed. So what we can do, we can lower now your, our ISO and bring down to 100 ISO. If you take a look at this image done with the flash compared to all natural light, meaning this one without flash, you can see that the balance between the ambient light, meaning the room, and the subject is different. Here the room is much brighter and it's almost the same brightness as the subject. While with the flash on, while with the flash on, as you can see, the room is a little bit darker compared to my subject. Now I still believe that this image is a little bit overexposed, so I lower down the power of the flash, as you can see here by this minus one. So what now we need to do is to try to include a little bit of more ambient light, just to balance a little bit and make the background lighter. And as I told you before, what we should do is increase the time that our shutter is open, so we can go from 1 25th of a second to 1 50th of a second and as you can see it starts to become brighter just look at these highlights over here from 1 50th of a second we can go down to 1 25th of a second and as you can see we pick up more light and we can continue and now we went to 1 5th of a second and now the background is pretty much well exposed you can see the ambient light is coming through it's giving a reflection and rim light on our subject and there is a nicer balance between the subject and the background now the thing is that all of these has been achieved by keeping your ISO as low as possible so the take home message here is to first set up your shutter speed aperture and ISO in the way that your room light, your ambient light, it's what you want. And then you add the flash on top of that and what is gonna happen is that the two light sources will mix. If the flash is giving you too much power, just reduce the power of the flash and you will see that you will achieve a balanced image in a much faster way. So this was not a very super technical review but I hope it helped you. And now I want to answer a question which is when to use flash. Well, basically, you should use flash in all those situations where either you have to raise your ISO way too high for the capabilities of your camera, or where you cannot have long shutter speed because, for example, the subject is moving. And these situations, they pretty much are always encountered by a photographer at events, whether it is like a reception, a wedding, so a cocktail hour, or just corporate events inside indoor buildings, or like nightclubs and parties. You need the flash, whether it is your pop-up flash on your camera or external speed lights like these ones that I have here. Now, whether which flash you should buy, I strongly suggest that you start with one of the simplest possible and also cheapest, because that will give you a little bit of taste of how it is flash photography if you like it, if you really want to invest in it, and then you can decide later, as I do, to invest in a more expensive system. For example, for all of you who are starting, I suggest you to get the newer VK750 second edition. It goes on Amazon for, I don't know, less than 50 euros or something like that, and it's an extremely reliable flash. I mean, I had it for a few months, it never failed on me, it has a lot of function here. The only thing which is missing is high-speed sync, which basically gives the possibility of capturing images with flash at very fast shutter speeds like 1 one thousandth of a second or more and it doesn't have a wireless trigger inside so if you want to use it off of your camera you need a wireless system to let your camera communicate with this flash but other than that i found it super nice it gives you the possibility to adjust the head of the flash so you can bounce it up on the ceiling and it has an internal autofocus assistant light which basically beams this kind of sniperish red stuff on your subject and helps your camera to focus in dark and very pitch black situations so this one is a very nice toy to play around and to learn i learned so many things with these and actually even brought me outside for an outdoor shooting where i had this flash off camera and a shoot 
through umbrella to diffuse it and it gave me amazing results. However, I soon realized that I might need a speed sync and I might need to trigger wirelessly many other flashes as I was stepping up into the kind of photography that I was doing, that's why I bought another kind of flash, which is the very also an expensive Yang Nuo YN685, which if you compare these flashes to the branded flashes from Nikon, for example, to have the same capabilities, you gotta spend, I don't know, maybe three times what this one costs. I think I paid this one 112 euros always on Amazon and I bought it with some wireless triggers, but the good thing is that this flash is a little bit more powerful than the other one, it has more functions, it has high speed sync, and it's ready to get wireless signals so it can command other flashes and it can receive the command from other flashes without the need of a wireless adapter because it has a radio wireless adapter built in here so these are the two flashes that i would recommend you to check out start with the newer get used to flash photography and if you like it and you need it then you can step up to the young no system or any other system that you like and here we are at the end of this video now what i will do next is to take a few pictures that i had at events that will show you how to post process them to get very nice and more balanced results but that will be a separate video so keep following the channel for now it's everything and i hope you liked what i'm doing if you like this video thumbs up comment down with your questions and consider subscribing if you aren't subscribed yet and in the meantime remember to shoot learn and improve because this is what we make on new pics and that's what makes us better photographers always i hope you stick around until next time take care Finger, thumb, thumb, thumb.